BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Interest rates are rising. If you have variable interest rate loans, such as an adjustable rate mortgage or a home equity line of credit, now might be a good time to lock into a good rate. If you have credit card debt, come up with a plan to get it paid off as soon as possible. Or see if you can get a better rate at another lender to speed up the repayment process. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU. Farmer's Policy Perks are that little extra something you can get when you're a farmer's customer. So to tell you about them, we're adding a little extra something to this ad. Another me. And when you have multiple farmer's policies, you could save up to 45% on your auto insurance with the auto multi-policy discount. What's going on with our voice? I thought I'd add some drama. Well, isn't that something? Get a quote at Farmers.com. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Not available in every state. Only available with select Farmers branded policies. Subject to terms and conditions underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance Exchanges, Farmers New World Life Insurance Company, or affiliate. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your wages are being garnished. We can stop that now. It's hard enough to pay your bills when things are good, let alone when a big chunk of your take-home pay is gone before you even get your check. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné, and I can stop the garnishment and get the creditors off your back immediately, often the same day as our consultation. Both Chapter 7 and 13 provide bankruptcy relief, but choosing the right chapter is crucial. In a free consultation, we can create a plan to get your finances back under your control. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, the rock of Seattle. You, gotta get, you really have got to get the new KISW face mask. Yep. We have two designs now. This brand new one, man, it's like camo style. And uh, so you want the skull, you want the camo. Hey, get both. Because a portion of each mask sold goes to the Washington State Nurses Association. They do a lot of great work educating and giving resources to nurses across the state. And they've been doing a great job for us during this whole pandemic. Get that KISW face mask. Help out the nurses. Fight Corona. Do it all at KISW.com. Let's play Beat Mix. It's time to play the game. To be Migs and let's get cracking on Thursday. Release the Kraken. Yeah, yeah release that Kraken. Nice hey. Kraken shirt, Rev. Yeah, well, what are you doing, buddy? Uh, it was. Uh, I could give you a million excuses, but I forgot to put one on today. Fair. Nice. Yeah. So yeah, yeah it's sure, on me. Your shirt has blue on it. Yeah, there's a little bit of a like, like teal sort of that are you it, serious, doesn't Danny? match at all. But I mean, it's pretty close. I'm trying to make him. I do better. remember though I'm that Rev, blue uh, jeans. Rev gave me a hard time, so I think all day yeah. long I get to give him a hard time. I mean, in all fairness, he's wearing a shirt. <laughs> yeah, I could just take off my shirt. That's like that would be releasing more the than the crack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be releasing a lot more than the crack. <laughs> well, let's get to our contestant today. We got Chris in Auburn. Chris, are you there? I am here. Excellent. All right, Steve, get out of here. Good. <laughs> For those playing at home, Chris will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Chris, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Ready. What is the name of Spain's famous cold soup made mostly from tomatoes? Gazpacho? Yes. What particle in an atom has a positive charge? Uh, neutron, no. electron. No. Uh, nucleus. No. Oh. In 1966, Chevy designed which car to, di- to directly compete with the Ford Mustang? Ooh. The Corvette. No. Oh, uh, Nova. No. Uh, Pass. Oh. What cocktail is made up of vodka, coffee, liqueur, and cream? Irish coffee? No. No, that's not it. Um, White Russian. Yes. What is the only U.S. state with a single syllable name? Oh. Pass. Pass. What is the, who is the star of the Santa Claus movies? Uh, Tim Allen. Yes. In 1995, Heather Whitestone became the first Miss America to have what disability? Pass. What Nirvana album has the songs In Bloom and Polly on it? 
Uh, never mind. Yeah, one, Woo! two, three, yeah. four, correct. Nice job. Yeah, I All mean, right, really not. Those well, were hard questions today. Yeah, yeah well, were. we'll see how hard they are when Steve comes in here. Yeah, you'll blame right. I don't think you'll get the first one, <laughs> but there's a couple of them I'm pretty sure he'll luck into. Yeah, yeah he always does. Yeah, Steve's good yeah, at that. Thank you. Whoa. That, yeah. was, that was oddly sexy. Steve, mm-hmm. are you ready? <laughs> Sums up my life. Release the crack. <laughs> what is the name of Spain's famous cold soup made mostly from tomatoes? Oh, um, gazpacho. Yes. What particle in an atom has a positive charge? Protons. Yes. Nice. In, in 1966, Chevy designed which car to directly compete with the Ford Mustang? Camaro. Yes. What cocktail is made up of vodka, coffee, liqueur, and cream? Uh... Vodka coffee? No. Yes! Oh. Whoa. Take it <laughs> Again, wow. Are you, take uh, your hands out of your pockets when you uh, do that. A right. Kafka. No. A drink. No. What is the only... No, it's probably something I'm like, oh, I'm an idiot. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're be mad. What is the only U.S. state with a single syllable name? Maine. Yes. Nice. Who is the star of the Santa Claus movies? Oh, tell, Tim Allen. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, In 1995, Heather Whitestone became the first Miss America to have what disability? Blind. No. Um, stuttered. No. Uh, lupus. No. What Nirvana... Syphilis. No. Wow. That's what Nirvana right. album has the songs In Bloom and Polly on Never it? mind. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six. You win. Six to four. Not bad. Yeah, pretty close there. Yeah, sorry. sorry about that, Chris. <laughs> yeah. I had fun. It was great, guys. Good. Uh, Thank you, you had some fun there. Yeah, that's all that matters. I didn't think you get the gas pacho. Uh, I really didn't think you get protons, so congrats. Protons, neutrons. Yeah, he knows what's up. He does. And then you missed uh, the cocktail made up of vodka, coffee, liqueur, and cream. Bailey's. Chris did not miss that. No, it's white Russian. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's, yep. I'm stupid. Yeah. Sorry, Big Lebowski. And congratulations on Maine. <laughs> a lot of people don't know much about Maine, but since Steve and I are both from the Northeast, we, that made it, we'd say, oh, yeah, Maine. Yeah. It's the only one I could think of. Yeah. Well, it's the only one. That's so. why. <laughs> I can't get that from here. Huh? Is is that a Maine accent? It is. It's a very slow Boston accent. Wow. Yeah. And so, the, um, how are ya? Yeah. Nice to see ya. Oh, that would drive me insane. Well, I wouldn't be able to handle that. Yeah. Well, you know, Massachusetts folks don't handle it very well either. I can tell. <laughs> yeah, good lobster, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, main lobster. Mm-hmm. Uh, in 1995, Heather Whitestone became the first Miss America to have what disability? Is that hearing disability? Yes. Yes. Yes, wow. she was deaf. I was yeah. going down the right road with blind. And she was my just people. just went off the rolls with, yeah. like, syphilis. She was my people. I was like, thank you, Heather. Well, yours is just because you're old. Wow. Okay. So, 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 unless if I'm not a young model looking person, then my disability doesn't count. Well, I'm just hey, saying uh, it was kind of gradual because you're old, and um, it's a good gonna... thing I can't hear you. Otherwise, I'd be offended by that. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to leave the studio now. After that one, yeah, uh, congrats, one. Steve. You won. Good job. Yes. No, he's got no cracking shirt. I making know. fun of me for a lot of reasons. I mean, my disability, my age. I mean, this guy is just batting a thousand today. It's not his day. No. This oh, might glad be he's out of the room. Yeah, they can <laughs> get him out of here. Steve, this might be a show for you and your wife. I know. Oh, good. We just finished away last night. Oh, oh you did. So yes. you got back to it. Oh yeah, we never gave up on it. It was just too heavy for to watch every single night. That's what I thought. I yeah. thought you know it's like okay, I wasn't sure how long the hiatus would be for you. It was just, just a, a short days. one. Yeah, and I'm glad we went back to it because the last couple episodes were just great from beginning to end. It, it was oh man, what a well done show. Man, all right, I might try it. Mm-hmm. I think you'll like it, man. They go to space. I know, but I don't. I mean, there's so much drama. Yeah, there is. And yeah, there's, but, but but the last couple episodes had enough intensity. I mean, it wasn't like no yuck yuck funny moments, but it was super intense, and you just wanted to know what was going to happen next. Oh, all right then. So it's good stuff. Do you know if there's going to be a season two? I would imagine they haven't come to Earth yet. <laughs> I, I, well, I just going to leave them in space? Well, I know they would like a season two. Sometimes with Netflix, you just pressure. never know. But I, I you know, I, I wonder how many people are watching away. You are, so there's that. A lot of people talked about it, and it's like one of their trending shows on their show thing. That, Netflix. <laughs> that one thing. You know something? I don't know why Netflix doesn't hire you as a full-time reviewer, because you do such a great job. Oh, I do a better job than their trailers. Uh, oh, man, just, there we go. Take a shot. Have you ever watched a Netflix trailer? Yes. They're the worst. Yeah, because they automatically play. Well, and also they just randomly find clips from the movie that are not like the appealing moments of a film. It's just <laughs> yeah. like a scene from the film or the show, and you're just like, what am I watching? Yeah. This is stupid. <laughs> I um I have to finish up. It's taking me a while to get back to you. Oh gosh, um I don't even know the name of it. Money Paul, Heist. No, Paul Rudd. Uh, Paul Rudd's got a show on Ant-Man. Netflix. 
No, it's uh, it's it's. I don't want to spoil it because. Oh, I you, know the one you're talking about. Gonna, it was I'm, a really good series, but that was like last year or something. Was it last year? And it's just taking me that long. Living to with out. yourself. That's it. Yeah, oh, I don't want to. Yeah. Oh, it was last year. Yeah, 2019. Yeah. Gosh, I'm so far behind because I'm. I might. I'm only been watching the episodes on the plane. And so I'm, I think I'm almost done. My wife and I started, but then she got tired of it. But I really think it's a cool concept. Yeah, Paul Rudd plays uh, himself and himself. And that's well, not himself I'm, like Paul Rudd, but like two yeah. of him. And it's, it's an oh, interesting it's like that, concept. Is it like that show with the dog? Remember like, <laughs> the show with the dog? Remember the guy that was with like a human dog? Oh, Wait. Elijah Wood. Yeah. Yes. Uh, oh. What was the name of that show? Wilfred. 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 No. No. Where it's like, you're like, are, are we just like, uh, is this the stuff that's going on in this man's head and that's it? No. What it, no, what it is, the basic premise, and it gets with it pretty, um, pretty right away, is that a man, after going a mysterious treatment, finds out that he's been cloned. Oh, way different. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he has to deal with the fact that there is now two of him running around. Okay, the premise sounds pretty good. It's, it's, it's super funny. It really is. And it's actually very well done. Uh, but my wife just got tired of it, but I'm watching the rest of them on the plane. Uh, and I, I'm kind of, uh, I don't know what's with my wife. It's like, I don't know why you're tired of this. I, it, it started a bit of an argument. I'm like, really? Really? You don't like that? Well, I'm How do you this. not like this show? And yeah, I, right. Well, I know the crap she watches. So I'm just like, you got it. I mean, really? <laughs> Is that you how be. you put it with her? Well, that's why the argument started. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, to you. <laughs> it's just like, your you know, wife because she doesn't like a show. Well, we started it. It's like, you know, I have, I have resolution issues. I need to finish what I started. And right in the middle, she goes, I'm done. <laughs> All right, Sammy Hagar. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and then it's like, well, what do you want to watch instead? And she goes, how about we watch this? And it is some lame-ass whatever, you know, reality show. And I go, no. You know what? And that's where the fight started. Yeah, did you put it that way again as well? Uh, yes. Because <laughs> I, I, these lame-ass reality shows, I just feel like, you uh, know what? No, I'm not wasting my time. Yeah, I'm not going to keep up with anybody. I'm not going to see anybody's housewife that's real. I don't want to know any of this stuff. My wife just got hooked on the, uh, the, the organization show on yes. Netflix. What the hell is that? <laughs> Is it the Marie Kondo stuff? No, it's another one. And the first episode has Reese Witherspoon. It's these women that start off like on Instagram. They just organize your closets and everything. And I just started watching it just in the background. And I'm, yeah, I really like it. But you watch it in the background. So it's not a foreground show for you. It's a background show. Well, I was also organizing while watching it. So that's why. I look at my wife. I'm like, why are you watching this crap? I'll grab a camera and you can just organize our house. Hey. Hey, there hey, you go. Good tips and advice on how to do it. See, I don't know how to do it. See, I, I, I don't even know. I, I, I know that's a phenomenon where people keep the TV on in the background and they get a lot of credit for it, even though people are half watching. I, You're uh, weird. Like, you watch television to watch television. I know. Yeah, I'm the I, same way. I have to pay attention to a show if I'm watching it, or else why watch it? I'm like a chihuahua with just slightly more complicated emotions. I just need noise in the background. Slightly. Yeah, slightly. But it's called Get Organized with the Home Edit. That's it. Yep. Yeah. Boy, you know, I, I, I get that there must be some brilliance into folks that now know all we got to do is put a show on TV that people will half watch. They'll still get credit for full watch, like in the ratings or whatever. You know, all if the thing is playing, the, the, they people don't know, like the ratings bots, whatever they right. use to do, don't know you're not watching it fully or even who knows at all. As long as it's on in the background. Yeah, I wonder if there's like an exec that's like, is this a good show for people to play on their cell phones? Yeah. Yep. All right, let's put it on there. Yeah, and Vicky is the, it, she's the yeah. target audience. I don't know what kind of person they're looking for. Oh, a chihuahua. What would you say? A chihuahua with, with limited emotional emotions. problems? With slightly more complicated oh, emotions. That's what it is. More okay. emotions. That's what yes. it is. Yeah. So what's the show that we might get into now? Was, uh, was that... Uh, oh, yes. Um, on HBO Max, this is for you. Uh, they're going to be making a show called Peacemaker, which is a spinoff from the upcoming Suicide Squad film, which I think is really... Yeah. What is, I mean, that is pretty much thinking, hey, this is going to be so great. That's You're a cart before the this. horse. Yeah, it's a cart before the horse sort of thing right exactly. there, Exactly. But I'm really stoked, and I think, Steve, you're going to be stoked. Yeah, because... Oh, it's John Cena. Yeah. John Cena plays the I title character. Cena. I guess he's in the film. Yep. And he's, um, he's crushing it right now with Hollywood. Like, he's quickly becoming a guy that's, you know, and, and not just like WWE made for DVD type movies. <laughs> like, he's been in some really good films. Yeah, he's, I've, I've seen his acting. He's, he's got decent chops, and it seems like he's really dedicating himself to it. I wouldn't be surprised, Steve, if he's got some good acting coaches because he's gotten better and better in everything I've seen him in. And, you know, uh, no doubt about he's it. Getting he's getting the reps in, BJ. He's got a great work <laughs> ethic. I mean, we know that about John Cena. And so um, well, he hustles and he's loyal and he's respectful. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, all of those things. <laughs> well, and also, uh, I love the film's writer and director, James Gunn. Uh, he's going to write this series and direct multiple episodes, including the pilot, which makes me, which makes me think, all right, I Who's, might give it a shot. So who the hell is the peacemaker? Um, I have no idea because I don't know much about Suicide Squad. I think in the trailer, they described him as a more jerky Captain America. In the oh. sense of, like, he's the all-American good guy, but he's kind of a jerk. Okay. Yeah. Well, that would be fun because they're saying this is going to be an action-adventure comedy. Uh, and there is a character in DC Comics named the Peacemaker. And so maybe Vicky's <laughs> right. Maybe he was sort of like a parody of Captain America and DC making fun of him. Yeah. Essentially, it comes down to is uh, he makes peace through violence. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So, you know. I, I like, like that. Kind of normal now. Yeah. yeah. You guys need to get along or I'll shoot you. He believes peace in peace break. at any cost, mm. no matter how many people he has to kill to get it. That's a quote from Okay, the- you know, I'm kind of sold on this. Oh, yeah, me too, man. Yeah. I got HBO Max, too, so it's like, well, I'll, you know, what the hey. I love that the little poster they came out with has the ba- has a bad word in it and just, like, blank. F word. Yes. It's peacemaker. Yeah. <laughs> I, I am. I have to tell you, HBO Max or the DC people, I really liked a lot of the stuff that they've done. Because, uh, you know, Warner, whatever, HBO owns, I guess they kind of own everything. DC, Warner Brothers, whatever. I yeah, don't know. any of the DC Universe, like, original shows are now being played on HBO Max. Like, I know that uh, the Harley Quinn show is now on it and they renewed it for season three. Doom Patrol is now on HBO Max. And I think that's also Wait, been there's renewed. There's a Harley Quinn show? It's an animated series. Oh, okay, you got it. With <laughs> Kaylee Cuoco. Yeah, Penny. Penny is uh, no, the it's voice like of her. It's just her voice. But it's still really funny. They it's swear. It's very foul, yeah. It's f- oh, it's yeah, so messed it's up. It's very adult. Okay, maybe I'll give it a whirl. Yeah, that's what I would take. And I want to say this right now, very quickly, about Doom Patrol, because uh, Vicky and I both watch that show. I don't know if Rev does, but nah. Vicky and I, you know, the more I watch that show, Vicky, the more I believe that Doom Patrol is a it's a, it's a series. It is a modern day Wizard of Oz. It takes you on the weirdest adventure. It really, really does. But man. It is well done, even though you don't know what the hell's going on. And maybe from a plot standpoint, you go, what is effing going on? But I, I compare it to The Wizard of Oz only because maybe because there's a Tin Man. Maybe, maybe that's what I'm thinking. But oh, there, yeah. You know, but there's everyone is just it's a there is a weird journey of misfit toys with a great heartfelt message and so many different emotions. It has become my favorite show. Wow. It's, yeah. it's one of those shows, if you're not really a nerd, it, it makes no sense in the sense of there's so many weird things that happen. You're like, really? Is that, are we, what? But it works, and that's what makes it good. I think it works because I think everybody feels like them. Weirdo, outsiders, outcasts, losers that can never get it together. People who Why are you feel- looking at me when you're saying that? Sorry, buddy. You know, so, and, and I, I, boy, is it just, it's well done. So it's Doom Patrol. That's uh, either on HBO Max or the DC Universe. Uh, but Steve? Yes, sir. You're in for John Cena. Yes. What is it called? Doom Peacemaker. Maker. Oh, okay. Yes. Doom Maker. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that's a new show. That's a the show. Peacemaker. When's yeah. it coming out? Uh, when, oh, it's probably going to be after Suicide Squad, right? We oh, that makes see, sense. You probably yeah, want to put the show out before the Yeah, movie. we have to see the movie and then maybe the show. All right. We got a guy helped out an old lady from being mugged and lost his job because of it. What? You're going to hear from 717 on The Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Should you buy or lease your next car? Most experts would advise that in the long run, buying is more economical than leasing. When you lease a car, you will not build up equity, and you may be responsible for wear and tear or excessive mileage charges. If you do decide to lease, be careful and pay attention to the realities of leasing. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU. Switch to Farmers and you could save an average of $437 on your home insurance. Get a quote at Farmers.com. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Based on average nationwide annual savings survey data July 2020 to 21. Underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance. Exchanges are affiliate. Products not available in every state. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. The file this under the no good deed goes unpunished department because uh, there's a dude named Amir. He's 20 years old, works at a supermarket in Vermont. And he was told that an elderly woman's purse had been snatched. So he's a part-time volunteer firefighter and a full-time hero. He just grabbed the suspect from behind, held him down, got the purse back. Now, he did have to call police, and while doing that, the suspect got away. But again, he was able to return the purse to the woman. And here's Amir describing the incident in which the woman was very, very thankful for his quick response. 
He was like, an old lady's purse just got stolen. I look to my right, and I see a gentleman running across to the parking lot, and he had the purse in his hand, and I was like, oh, there's the guy. She was trying to offer me money. I was like, I don't, I don't want your money. You know, I just wanted to help you out, do what's right. It's not like I was like, oh, I'm going to go do this and be some hero. I was just like, hey, an old lady's purse got stolen, you know. I gotta, I'm going to do something about it. Does he, is it me, or does he sound like Ricky from Trailer Park Boys? He has a little bit of, he did, for some reason, I just, that's the first guy I pictured. I wasn't picturing that, because if it was Ricky, you would say, how much are you willing to give me as a reward? That's a good point, you're right. And and there would have been some weed somehow mentioned in there. Right. Yeah. And he would have shot somebody. Oh, that's right, he would have shot the guy, you're absolutely right. Uh, so, uh, that is, I mean, look, I, I think it's fantastic, but here's the problem. Amir was fired from his job for doing this. This goes back to, you always hear this nowadays. If you work in a department store, a grocery store, you see someone shoplifting, you you just can't do anything. I hate that rule. Right. I really do. Thanks, lawyers. Yeah, and, and this is what we're going to hear from a lawyer right now. Uh, uh, Pietro Lynn says it makes sense for a company like this, uh, a supermarket, to not want their employees interfering because an injury you know, and other liability issues... It is not uncommon at all for employers to discourage employees from laying hands on customers. There are many cases in Vermont where employers are held responsible for the wrongful acts of their employees. By the way, I hate that. I think if right. you if you are breaking the law, I'm sorry. In my joint, I, you know what? You get injured. That's because you're the idiot that tried to break the law. You're you're, you're taking somebody's stuff. It's like those stories you hear about where someone breaks into someone's home and then hurts themselves and then they sue and they actually get a settlement out of it. You know, like, how is that even possible? You broke into the person's home. You know how you could have avoided any of that happening by not breaking into that person's home. I think this sorry, is sorry. You you twisted your ankle. This really is why I think people are just pissed every time something happens where they go. You know what? This is unjust because the fact of moments like this. The, this is where the law is twisted. I, 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 I think this sucks. He has found another job, but Amir even himself said he was very surprised he'd been let go. Why should it make a difference that, hey, I'm clocked in, now he's in trouble. If I wasn't clocked in, oh, you did a good job. What? Yeah. <laughs> he's a right. solid point. He's what? absolutely right. I mean, what? Uh, if you're if you're if you're just a young person trying to do the right thing in life and then you see how our rules and regulations are so stupid, I, I mean, I, he's absolutely right. Could you imagine, though, like if the woman's getting mugged, right? And then all of a sudden he sees it happening. You know, she's probably looking at him like, help me out. And he's like, sorry, lady. I can't help you because I'm afraid I might lose my job. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, couldn't, I couldn't even imagine like going to bed that night and thinking I didn't help that person because I was afraid to lose my job. And there were, aren't there some issues? There are some places where in certain conditions, like if somebody needs help and you don't help them, you could get in trouble. I, I don't know if like if somebody's hurt on the side of the road and you just keep driving. And in some places I thought, I don't know if it's our country or somewhere else where you oh, can actually, yeah. you can be, you could be, if they find out that you could have helped somebody and you didn't, you could be in trouble. We're the opposite where, you know what, if you help somebody, you get in trouble. Just we need I, a hero. You know what it is, man. <laughs> Damn lawyers. Yeah. Yeah. We need a hero to. Deal with those lawyers. Is all I got to say. Who is that? We need a hero. It was the fairy godmother in Shrek, right? That doesn't help me at all. No. <laughs> well, what are you talking about? You look like Shrek. You should know this. I know. That's why I don't watch it. I already lived it. Also known as Bonnie Tyler. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, good job, buddy. Oh, yeah. Oh, holding out for a hero. No, I need a hero. Oh, well, it's not holding out for one. She's needing one. Oh, she needs one. Okay, well, you know what, Bonnie? You got one hero. You got You got it. His name is Amir. <laughs> It's the lukewarm topic of the day. Yeah, so a grocery store worker gets fired for stopping a thief. Based on this, whether it be a job, a relationship, or anything else, finish this sentence. I cannot believe they got rid of me for blank. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Finish this sentence. Man, I can't believe they got rid of me for blank. You call us your text after Puddle of Mud on the Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. A grocery store worker was fired for stopping a thief. So based on this, we want to know whether it be a job, a relationship, or anything else. Finish this sentence. I can't believe they got rid of me for blank. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Let's go to Jacob in Tacoma. Jacob, you are on The Rock. Hey, guys. How you doing this morning? Morning, Jacob. What you got for us, buddy? Hey, so I was working for a sports vendor, and I was a hot dog salesman selling foot-long hot dogs. Oh, Somebody was being very adamant that they didn't know what a foot-long hot dog was. So I had to say, 
It was a 12 inch wiener. So I got fired for sexual harassment. Ah! Like hot dog. Oh. You got fired for saying that a hot dog's a 12 inch wiener. Yes. I said, they're like, oh, what's this uh, foot long hot dog in the description? I'm like, oh, is this a 12 inch wiener? Did you point at your crotch while saying that? I don't understand why this would get you uh, fired. No, I'm just serving beer. Um, but this, uh, uh, they come back with their um, significant other. It gets in my face and they're yelling and they're drunk. Oh, you got Pardon it. Me, guys, I'm walking. Uh, oh, okay. So, so if this was a customer and then the significant other comes back and complains and... Uh, I was being suggestive uh, that I... Um, and no. then I was saying, like, oh, yeah, come get my 12-inch wiener. I'm jealous much? I mean, yeah. she's got it. A little bit insecure. And so, and so the... He uh, has a two-inch wiener. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so the company fired you for that? Yes, they did. They let me go with, like, about a month left, left in the season. You know, I, I appreciate the call. Thank you, man. I, you know, not I, every customer is right. I hear stories like this, though. The other, I mean, I don't feel like I'm getting all the sides. You know what I mean? Because it seems so ridiculous. Well, what do you think? Like he's like, it's a twelve-inch wiener, and then he licked his lips and blew a kiss. Well, it doesn't seem ridiculous to fire yes. somebody for that. It's completely ridiculous. Oh man. yeah, it is. But I mean, drunk customer yelling. Yeah. I mean, it depends on how the customer like presented it. You know what I mean? Like maybe they said it in a way that the 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 GM's just like I. This sounds bad. I don't know. I, yeah, you're right. I would. I would it's like to. Completely have, ridiculous. Well, uh, you know, and 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 you know, you get drunk people. I've it, offered my 12 inch wiener to Ryan Castle all the time. It's never once gotten me in trouble. No, not at all. As a matter of fact, <laughs> if anything, it's gotten you a lot of perks. Right. Yeah. Wow. How about this person? Not yeah. via text says I smoked a lot of weed in school. My ex dumped me because she said I'm never going to amount to anything. Well, I make 100000 a year. I have no college in me. And how you like me now, bitch? <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Damn! Okay, I feel like he's still not over her. I hope he texted that at some point. Yeah. Or I don't. How do you like me now, <laughs> bitch? The best way to get over is yeah. to move forward. Yeah. Sounds like you're doing just fine. Yeah. How do uh, you like me now? You know, yep. sometimes, though, you, uh, here's what I would say. Was that the motivator? You know what I mean? Would he have been just a loser had not somebody pointed out that look at this loser lifestyle you have? I sometimes look at it like maybe sometimes that person really got that fire lit under you and you became something because of them. Yeah, you could be right. I don't know how much smoke, uh, weed the guy's smoking still, but... Yeah, well, listen, man, there's nothing wrong. Look, if you're living your life and getting stuff done and you're happy and you know no one's calling you a loser, I think, you know what, they smoke as much as you want. One person said I had a job with a disgruntled worker, so they locked the building every morning, and I couldn't get in to punch in on time, so I got fired. They said the door being locked was not an excuse. Okay, what? You, you know what? You locked out. Why would you want to be stuck with a company that doesn't want to understand that? Yeah, that is, I mean, I... I, I How can I come into work if I can't open the door? Yeah, what... It, what? You know, again, this is this is why a lot of small businesses fail. You, I mean, this is the kind of idiotic stuff you hear about. You know, that company's probably not even business anymore. 206421 Rock, text us at 77999. We want you to finish this sentence. It could be a job, relationship, anything else. I can't believe they got rid of me for blank. So it says, I got fired for using the bathroom too much. Little did they know I was doing it because I couldn't stand any of them and I was trying not to beat the living crap out of them. <laughs> And who doesn't like getting paid to take a dump? <laughs> it sounded like me. I almost got canned because I, well, I would fall asleep on the toilet because... It's all well, a different story. Yeah. I mean, I was just, I was a kid. I was 18. I didn't really care about the job. I didn't really have work orders to do. So I was just like, I'm just going to go hang out. And they were like, where were you? And I was like, uh, I was upstairs uh, looking for parts. I got put on a 90-day probation. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Joke's on them. I quit before that. Yeah. How you like me now, bitch? Yeah. <laughs> That is the difference. You know, the, the difference is, is that somebody will go and basically just slack off in some people's minds, but they're just getting whatever they're doing. They're just, they don't want to be doing whatever they're doing or they don't want to be around the people. I had the opposite problem. I would be mouthy when I didn't want to be where I was. And I, you know, I didn't know at the time. I just thought, well, I guess I'm stuck here. I could have left at any time. I don't know why my brain didn't figure out like, you know what? You're miserable. Get out of here. You know, because <laughs> they're yeah, not right. going to change. Right. The situation is not going to change. For me, it was a relationship, not a job, and it was actually the last relationship I was in, which was, I don't know, Was that the ago. guy that I uh, like, that wanted to beat me up at the park? Was it that, that guy? <laughs> no, that uh, was... <laughs> was he LARPing? <laughs> no, <laughs> DJ said something, like, insulted me in a way. BJ insults me, but oh. to the average person, it sounds pretty horrible. Understandable, yeah. yes. And it was so, a great line, and Vicky laughed, but the other dude was just like, what the F? And he was like a really, like, meek, kind of not fighter type of guy. Oh, he wanted to fight for your But uh, he was going to fight honor. for my honor, and I was very so impressed by that. So you get honor. 
Yeah. Yes. Hell yeah. But it's not about this da- guy. It was a dude I was dating, and he said that he wanted to break up because he wanted to pursue his music career. Okay. Which I'm like, oh, okay. He's like, I'm in, I'm 30, and if I'm going to make it, I got to go. I'm like, okay, that's kind of, okay, you do you then. And then I later found out by the friend who introduced us that the reason we broke up was because he hated how scheduled I was. Because we had very opposite schedules, so I would schedule basically whenever we would see each other or coffee or even sexy time. Like I, that would be great. You're like, look, you could dump me, but I have it scheduled for three thirty tomorrow. <laughs> right. <laughs> and actually, after we broke up, I'm like, hey, um, so last booty call, and he's like, well, I'm busy today. I'm like, how are you tomorrow? And so even the last wait. So after he, he up, dumped you, you you tried to organize one more booty call. Yeah. Like a going away present? Basically, I had already let go of all my, you know, my booty call dudes. So I had to, like, do something you know, until I, I got new ones. I do love that in Vicky. That's the Virgo. If you get, I mean, I don't really go for horoscopes, but I just love that she is a scheduling Virgo like myself. I love that you weren't even heartbroken about the relationship ending. You're just more like, okay, can we just arrange one more bang? It's like, I mean, I... I, I <laughs> found a good I found it's a very good reasonable. person to do this with, so why wouldn't I? Fair. See, Vicky's very pragmatic. She's like, okay, this guy knows how all the systems work. Why wouldn't I one more time? I gotta imagine he's scratching his head when I, he goes to his buddy. He's like, hey, how'd the dumping go? Like, how did did you actually do it? He goes, yeah, but she wanted to end off with a bang. But we had to schedule it for like two days later. You know what's amazing? But, made it happen. but I made it happen. Wow. What is amazing to me is that what one person doesn't like another, because I would, if somebody would want to schedule sex with me, I mean, it, when I was dating, I would be like, yes, not only do I not have to approach you and wonder if you want to, you're actually willing to put it on the calendar and keep your word. That kind of woman to me would have, I, I, you know that what? Would weird me out. Really? Yeah. Oh, I would well, love you know, that. I mean, you oh. guys know me. I'm a man of romance. It's got to be like, it's got to happen. <laughs> oh, is that oh, oh, yeah. I, I forgot that about but you. Like, yeah. it'd be, I, I did too much pressure on myself to be like, oh, man, it's 2.59 and one minute we're about to have sex. Oh, not for me, man. <laughs> not for me. Oh, I, if somebody, I mean, anybody, you know, I mean, I, at that time when I was young, anybody could have said it and I would have been ready. There's no, there's no pressure, nothing. I'm ready to go. You get an evite because it's back in those days. Right. Yeah. That's like a Facebook event evite. Like, you should create a Facebook bang event. <gasps> That's great. Idea. Create like a little group of all of your booty calls and then you work out a schedule for them all. I'm like, sure they would I, love it. I'm 31 though, so all my booty calls are now like in relationships or married with kids, so it's. Oh, yeah, you're right. And, yeah, you're kind of. I'm, I'm, I'm at the age where I'm well, like. It's time I'm, for you to be Mrs. Robinson. Cuckoo, cuckoo. <laughs> Ooh, wow. That's a great idea, Vicky. It's he's, a, he's a, I, I, look, I think there's a lot of men in their 20s, 25 years old. They don't know what they're doing. And oh, it's your yeah. job to teach them. I don't want to. Well, you I'm, know what? That's just where your role is now in life. I spent my all my 20s having very mediocre sex until I found one or two guys that were good at it. And then, you know, that obviously didn't work out. And it's like, I don't want to spend my 30s with more mediocre sex and having to teach them. I'm too old for this crap. Oh, look at this. I, I can't believe Vicky wants certain things. Well, if not you, who? Someone needs to help these young men. Other, you know, 20 year old women <laughs> that are in their age group. They have to be disappointed like I was. Oh, that's a really good point. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> wow. I, I don't know how men can't get it done nowadays. There's so much info out there. I right. had nothing. YouTube it. I had <laughs> nothing. I, I mean, you can learn how to change your tires on YouTube. I'm sure you can learn how to do, you know, certain things. Find things. Check the oil. I think it's the whole communication thing. People are weirded out to talk about that kind of thing. And if you offer constructive criticism, they get role offended. It's like, hey, I prefer you not do it this way or do it that way. Well, there is a rejection thing. Mm -hmm. And and, and Brene Brown writes about that, that a man does not want to be rejected in any way, shape or form in the bedroom. and And sometimes he will view being told to do something differently like oh i've been rejected i'm yeah. bad and it's like no dude i mean you get, she's actually saying look if you just go to the left or you know what you get this power tool whatever it is yeah. uh but it's a tough one for men to feel any kind of rejection in the bedroom it is a huge huge thing and as it were and yeah. uh and Brene brown is, writes about how it is crushing and a lot of women don't understand this so um but also the idea that you got a woman that says look hey how about you do this communication i mean i wish that happened so many times in my relationship where a woman would say hey dude i want to be with you but can you do this and be Mm -hmm. like and of course it was always tough for women to even communicate because that was a stigma so we just got to talk man and or we need to go to the most romantic guy in the world and ask him how to do it me yeah. yeah, you. I was. Yeah. You know, I pointed to you, so I'm glad yes. you got the cue that it was you I was talking about. I'm here for you guys. Unbelievable. I, uh... Hey, how about this? We got a song from 1908 that was never meant to be a hit. It's a typo. It's 1980. Sorry. Oh. 
<laughs> okay, well. Okay, it's still cool that it was never meant to be hit, but 1908 would have been cooler. Uh, anyway, this 1980 song just hit one billion streams. Uh, what song is it? Well, it's not from 1908, so you might have a better shot at getting it. I'll tell you, 747 on the rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. If I call Travis, will I actually see him or someone who works for him? Absolutely. When you come in to see my to my office, uh, when you first call in, my staff will try to help you with with any basic questions that you have. Uh, I can give you a call back, uh, but they'll schedule usually try to schedule you for a free consultation with me, the, the attorney, and I'll meet with you personally. We'll talk about your the basics of your case and I'll take you through a question and answer session that usually last an interview that usually lasts about 30 minutes uh, where we'll get the basics of your financial situation I can answer your questions and we can talk about whether bankruptcy makes sense your uh, your non-bankruptcy options uh, and how bankruptcy could affect you what the process is thanks Travis if you have more questions about bankruptcy you can reach out to Travis anytime at choose the right chapter.com that's choose the right chapter.com Thanks for listening. BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. When was the last time you took a look at the asset allocation of your investments? With the recent increases in the stock market, your investments may have behaved differently, with some gaining or losing more than others. This can throw your asset allocation out of balance. If you haven't rebalanced recently, take a closer look to make sure your allocations meet your objectives. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU.